Colleen Callahan, thanks for joining us on the Illinois Channel. Thanks for asking. Uh, we've, we've talked a number of times over the years, but now you have once again a new title. Thank you are you. the director of the Department of uh, Natural Resources, so congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. Um, how did it come about that you became the director? Well, it wasn't in my day planner, but I was asked if I would consider it. Um, I had co-chaired the transition team uh, for agriculture and rural development with John Sullivan, who eventually became the director of agriculture. And during that transition, when we had meetings uh, among the stakeholders who had been asked to serve, when we would talk about issues that they felt needed to be addressed during the time that we were elevating topics and writing the report to submit, um, when someone would bring up the nutrient loss reduction strategy, when someone else would bring up cover crops, the thought occurred to me that we weren't really just talking about agriculture. We were also talking about natural resources because the nutrient loss reduction strategy is about water uh, and cover crops is about water and also soil and aren't those natural resources. So when I was asked if I would consider this, I, I started doing my due diligence and learned more about the Department of Natural Resources in preparation for my interview with the governor. And I, it, it was an epiphany to me. I, I would be the first to admit. I, I had no idea of the breadth and depth of the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. To think that one agency is responsible for mines and minerals and oil and gas and water resources. And I haven't even mentioned the face of the department, which is a deer and a duck. And it is, because we think most immediately about licensing and tags for hunting, fishing, camping, boating. Um, our conservation police, which is an incredible force uh, and such a need, beyond uh, being the game warden, quote unquote, the number of grants uh, that we have. Uh, we're also responsible for all the historic sites in the state of Illinois. Uh, all, all of the state museums. Uh, it is an incredible responsibility that we have to make sure that our natural resources are preserved and also prepared uh, for the enjoyment and use uh, of our citizens. So um, it, it is uh, humbling, truly, to, to be in this position and to work with the team that is so dedicated to the mission. Well, and you just kind of threw the stone across the pond, so to speak, but, uh, and that's exactly one of the things uh, that I hope this interview is uh, going to show, is that people, I think, they hear about the Department of Natural Resources. They, they think, uh, I think, frequently about hunting and fishing in the parks, but they don't know all that it does. Right, and, and I didn't even mention the parks, the 300 and some parks that, that we have. Um, so you're right. So I view my, my role and my responsibility as being the, the advocate for the department, truly. Um, for the staff who at one time, uh, in the early 2000s, uh, I believe totaled about 2,400 people. Today we have 1,136. Uh, yet all of the same responsibilities exist, uh, which means that fewer people are doing more, and they do. Um, from, from a site superintendent at one of our parks, um, across the, the different program areas that we have. I've learned that they're really not unlike teachers who we, who we know, who we read, who we hear about, who will dig into their own pocket to make sure that a student has a, a uniform for an athletic activity or for an extracurricular um, performance. Mm -hmm. um, if there's an event at, at one of our facilities, one of our parks, and the restroom isn't working, I promise you somebody will run into town and get whatever it takes at, at the hardware store to make sure that that restroom works uh, for that weekend's event. Um, so to be part of a team that has such dedication to the mission um, is, as I said earlier, it's, it's humbling, and I, I should be their advocate. I ran into you earlier this year in the Capitol, and I think I said to you, you have the the best job in state government because it's fun it's you know it's about hunting and fishing and parks and 
very family oriented um, and also educational with the museums. We right. talked off camera about the Illinois State Museum, among others. You mm -hmm. have uh, also the, uh, the, not the Cahokia Mounds, but was we, the other mounds? Sure, or do you yeah. have Cahokia yeah, as well? Yeah, we do. We do. We have Cahokia. Uh, we have Dixon Mounds. Um, we also have Lincoln's New Salem State Park. Um, so it is, it is vast and various. And, and I would say, and, and this, by the way, for the people that don't know, and the Illinois Channel did a story on Cahokia Mounds before. We're talking about Illinois history, correct? You know, going back to what twenty thousand years or something, when the, the uh, there was a major Indian tribe uh, looking at the Cahokia Mounds, right. the people who settled along the uh, Mississippi River, mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that those mounds are still there and represent the history of that period is right. fascinating. It is. You know, when you, when you, it's, it's like layers of an onion, the history of the state. It is, and it's, it's the same scenario at, at Dixon Mounds as well. Um, it, so t to that very point that you make, uh, I think the first or second week that I was here, I visited our collection center, which is part of the museum, which is where we house uh, all of these artifacts um, and representations of the state's history, all the way from from furniture and 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 dolls to artwork to paintings to um, all of the wildlife that that would have existed decades uh, ago, and to see that that someone has taken the time and the care to preserve that um, is remarkable and it's also something that until you see it you just you just don't think about somebody being the caretaker of all of that so you can imagine which is really uh, I mean when you think about it and we don't and I mean which is why I want to bring to their <laughs> exactly we think about state government understandably so is the state capital and so many people poo poo this or that because of you know, political reasons but it's also the state we want to maintain the artifacts of the state correct whether it's the constitution or whether it's an indian artifact from no, you know hundreds exactly, of years ago that's exactly right uh as well as the continental the time we were part of france and the rest uh and someone's got to do that and so i guess right now it's you <laughs> <laughs> you and your team no that's that's exactly right and we don't think about that and, and to see fully taxidermied uh, you know, bear and, and, and all of the things that, that we do uh, think as part of our wildlife and our flora and our fauna in our state uh, are actually categorized. And, and so you go from, from room to room to room and, and everything has to be at the right temperature and the right humidity to make sure that that is correctly preserved. We house the artifacts. You made a point earlier about uh, our history and Native Americans. We house the artifacts of the Peoria tribe in Springfield at our collection center. Uh, so you can imagine, Terry, the, the excitement and the sense of gratitude, I will say, when our museum staff received a request um, from Governor Pritzker to come visit the Illinois State Museum. So I met the, the governor and his staff there that day, and while we were waiting, our staff, not the governor's staff, but, but our museum staff said, do you know that this is the first governor that's asked to visit the museum since Governor Thompson? And I said, no. And I'm not saying this to be political. There have been governors on both sides mm -hmm. of, sure. of, of our political choices since Governor Thompson. But for our staff, who had to close the museum, um, and then lost their accreditation uh, during the period when we didn't have Are they uh, back budget. to being accredited? They are now open, and I think it was the second day I was here, they had just gotten word of their reaccreditation. I had nothing to do with that, except I got to be there to see what it meant to them. Because this is their work for the state. They, they preserve our history. Um, and that's something that I would have never known were it not for being in this position. So I feel that it is my responsibility to, to communicate that, to impart that, that this is part of what our Department of Natural Resources does and is responsible for. 
You have, you mentioned something like 339 or what had you, how many parks? Uh, I think 329, so we'll say over 300. Over 300, yes. which, you know, and scattered throughout the state, so yes. people all across. And, and some just, uh, I've been to only a handful, but uh, some amazing ones, uh, I can certainly say. I've been to the, was it Northern Illinois Beaches? Uh, yes. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Which. When you Beach? take, I took a picture and, and put it up on Facebook, and people guess it's Florida. Yeah, where is be, this? Because that's what it looks like. I mean, okay. there's no palm trees, but you're looking out over the inland ocean of the Lake Michigan. And you can do the same thing along the Cache River in southern Illinois. You and look I at was going to bring that up. And you think, well, well, they must be in Louisiana. I mean, there's moss on the trees. There's all kinds of. It looks like the Louisiana bayou. It looks exactly like the bayou. You're right. Uh, and people don't know, the Ohio River used to be about, what, 40 miles north of where it is today? Uh, or something, so, maybe 50 like miles? That, yeah. The glaciers pushed the Ohio down to where it is today, and what had been the Ohio River Valley flooded. There was like 200,000 acres of swamp land, yeah. and it's in southern Illinois, the Cache River mm -hmm. Basin. Uh, it is of the parks, the ever uh, southern uh, the southern United States uh, swamps, I should say, yeah. the Everglades being one, the Bayou being one. Right. This is the northernmost of the southern swamp system. Yeah, it, it's it's remarkable. I mean, just if if someone were just blindfolded and said, "Just bear with me now. We're going to take you on a little trip, and and then open your eyes. Now, guess where you are." You would never guess that that you were uh, along the Cache River in southern Illinois. I tell people even who born and raised in Illinois, they never heard of it. And this goes to show that uh, to help get word out, people need to be able to travel the state. And you know, here's the other thing, dollars for tourism, right? I mean, how many people would like to go to Cash, uh, the Cash River, uh, Shawnee National Forest, Star of Rock State, uh, Star of Rock, uh, Northern Illinois beaches, and there's so many fascinating places as well as the historical sites. And it, it is part of um, what I recognize uh, we, is my responsibility it, it, to be able to, once we're able to uh, make the improvements that, that need to be made, frankly, in, in some of our parks that we weren't able to do during that period when we didn't have funding and and we couldn't hire, and, and then there were retirements, and then we couldn't bring people in. Uh, it's no secret that our, uh, our parks and many of our facilities um, begged for upkeep. Right. But, but, and now we're in a position where we can do that. We, we do have a budget, and we have a, a capital bill that will allow us to do some of those things. So one of the messages that we need to send as a consequence of that is that you don't have to travel out of state to have the experience that you're expecting when you go to Door County, as an example. Mm -hmm. you, you can stay in Illinois and have a very similar uh, experience. Yeah, there's really just uh, a very much in incredible experiences out there, uh, and I, I, that's, I remember even in the Blagojevich years uh, that you would have trash cans overflowing at parks because they didn't have the personnel to go around and pick the trash up. So it's been a long time it's been a that long we've time been underfunding the parks. That's correct. And, and you just mentioned some, and that's why one of the questions I wanted to have. Um, by the way, what was like your first day on the job? How long March you, 1. I'm sorry. March 1st. March 1st. So, like everything, when we everyone can relate, when you're in a new job, you got a learning curve, you got a master. You also were thrown right in, preparing for a budget for the next. So you had to jump in. How did you come out on the budget? How are you? How did you come out on the capital bill? And with both the capital monies and the budget monies. Um, relative to the long, at least a decade or more of, frankly, the underfunding of state parks, what, what repairs and all can you be to get us back to where you think we ought to be? Well, it, you, you said it well. You and, can't and do it all in one and year. It, and it's a great question because what we have to do is, is play catch up now. Right. Uh, and when you're playing catch up, that's exactly what you're doing. You won't, you won't get ahead as quickly as you would like, but first you have to catch up and then, then you can get ahead, hopefully. Sure. Um, but the budget for us is um, flat, which is okay. It, it's $330 million, but here, here's one of the differences, is that during the period when we didn't have a budget or funding, we left a, a lot of federal dollars on the table because we didn't have the match. 
the matching funds. The, the matching and, funds and typically to, to it's what, twenty percent match? It, it, it can be it can be eighty twenty, it can be seventy five twenty five. In any case, it means that you don't get it. If you it. don't have it, you don't have it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you and so now we, we can um, secure that, that funding, those dollars. which will make sure yeah. that we do have that money available to us that we didn't have. Uh, in addition to that, um, and, and I, I didn't know this by heart, so with the capital uh, built, $10 million for the um, National Areas Acquisition Fund, which means that we can add to our um, Land state acquisition. properties, right, mm -hmm. so that we can have more uh, opportunities for people to use public lands uh, in the state of Illinois. We have 25 million new approps for uh, the Open Lands Trust, which also is, is part of that. 23 million uh, for the OSLAD grant. Th that is a, a grant that comes from the uh, real estate tax. And so when there is a real estate transfer and, that, and there is that tax, uh, part of that it goes into this fund to help fund our parks through a grant system. And I have said, and I said it in appropriations hearing, there isn't one elected official in the state that doesn't have a park in his or her district. It may be a community of 300 people, but I promise you there's a plot of land somewhere with a swing set on it that they call their park. Mm -hmm. So when we don't have those well, funds available... If you live in an apartment, it's a place you could go have a picnic with your kids. Exactly. Right? And so this is a fund, I would say, uh, of the, the questions that I got during my first few weeks here when I was uh, at at the Capitol and, and I was preparing and meeting with elected officials so that I knew what they wanted to hear and learn during the appropriations hearing. Almost to a person it was, what about the funding for the parks, that OSLAD grant? We want that in there and it's in there. So that will make a huge difference uh, to our parks. Um, and 50 million for additional local park development, to your point, for different projects. 20 million for hazardous dam removals. Uh, we, we've had a lot of flooding and we've had some dams that have, have uh, not held. Uh, and when we didn't have a budget and didn't have funding, it was pretty difficult to, to make sure that you were meeting the needs. And so now we do have funds allocated for that. Um, and 23 million for state match for uh, Corps of Engineer ecosystem restoration. So it, it will make a huge difference. And probably Maybe just not some of the roads getting repaved yes. and, uh, and different facilities that might need a new correct. air conditioning system or something along those and lines. What I said when I when I first started and started meeting with staff, um, I said, you know. By the way, can I ask you when you met sure. with staff? Yes. And you go, okay, gang, I'm new. You know what's going on. What is the state of the state mm -hmm. uh, relative to our parks? Did they, what kind of an evaluation did they say we're, we're holding our own or, oh my God, we're hanging on by our fingernails? What they said was is that we have a billion dollars in deferred maintenance. I can believe it. A billion dollars in Because it's been put off for so long. Right, correct, correct. So that was consistent. It, it didn't matter whether it was parks or whether it was dams or what department I may be uh, visiting with to, to ask them to help me prepare for what I needed to know. Um, that succinctly said it all, a billion dollars in deferred maintenance. And so. people don't, we don't think about this, but imagine just when you're cutting all the land at a park, and so the employees are there, way down the totem pole, so to speak, but they're going out trying to cut, and they, they know we need a new lawnmower. Now, you don't think about that, but then the park looks like hell if you don't get the grass cut, like anyone exactly else's lawn, right. you know? And so it all filters out, you know? Probably, there's probably no other agency. I say probably. But probably there is no other agency that has more direct contact with the public than the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. You say, well, we all pay taxes, or, you know, so we got revenue, or, right. or if you own enough to drive, you get your driver's license. But direct contact. Because you can do a lot of that via mail um, or using technology. But direct contact is to experience a park and a museum and to go hunting, to go fishing, to go boating, to go camping. So that's the direct contact. And again, to your very point, Terry, the condition uh, of our parks and our national reef uh, sources reflects the condition of our government. We had also um, some areas like in Sparta, which had 
drawn a lot of people from out of state. Correct. To me, this is one of the crazy things. There, there are times I will tell people from having covered state government for 20 years, you spend money, but it makes you money. Correct. And Sparta was one of those. We developed the Sparta shooting area for skeet the shooting. The shooting complex. And, and people came from all, all around the, the country. The world. Yeah. And spent money. And then here, the state ends up closing it down, which made no sense. Correct. Uh, so where are we on Sparta now? Well, we are, where I am with it is to try to revitalize that. Um, and so I have met with the elected officials who represent th that area. And that's area. in the Metro East area. Yes, correct. Um, so h how do we work together uh, to re uh, reinvigorate, re-energize, uh, re-establish the uh, World Shooting Complex? It, it is an incredible, a phenomenal facility. Uh, there are still events there, but during that period when it was closed, then so there is was it no at staff. least open now? It, it is, it, okay. it is, but with a skeleton staff. Mm -hmm. um, and to your point, you have to spend money to make money. So the state spent money uh, on the World Shooting Complex in Sparta uh, to make it a recreational opportunity that that really didn't exist almost anywhere else. Um, and if you don't market it. So they built it. Now, are they coming? Well, they won't come if, if people don't know about it. So, right. one, we have to work together to get staffing again, uh, and then we have to start marketing it. So it, it is a work in progress, I promise you. Well, and, and again, that's the, we could probably point to other examples, but I would say to people, when we talk about a $40 billion state budget, we just did spend a lot of money, but it's also that we were recovering. And, and look, you can criticize. I'm sure you and I could both go through the budget and probably find any number of projects we would say, we don't need that. Everyone could do that in a $40 billion budget. But the, the other point I would say is, when you didn't have a capital budget for 10 years, when you didn't pass a budget for several years, uh, there's just a lot of as you said, defer consequences, and things got run down, and so we're uh, playing catch up. The good news is, we passed a budget. Mm -hmm. um, people know now there's money coming in. We had a capital of budget, so now we can go back in, both on the roads and bridges, as well as some of the vertical monies we talk about for, for building maintenance and stuff. But there's a lot of great facilities out there. And the other thing is, and I'm sound like I'm being your cheerleader, but I... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, but, you know, I've gone to these parks, and there are people there that can't afford to go to European vacations. They're, they're taking their family there. Um, they're camping. But you can have a heck of a lot of fun with the family. Yes, right. You know, we have a, an advisory board uh, that, that I've met with since I've been here, and um, so we, we listen. You know, what are your suggestions about what, what could we, should we be, be doing? Um, and one of the, the suggestions from, uh, this was uh, a board member from over in the, in the Quad Cities area, and, you know, and he said, when I go over to Iowa, you know, and I was just like, oh, okay, all right, when you go over to Iowa, what? Uh, well, when I go over to Iowa with my kids uh, and we're fishing, they have fish cleaning station for the kids. And I said, oh, okay. So I took that in my, my notes, and so then I went to our um, director of, of, of our parks, and I said, uh, you know, do we have this, or how many of these do we have? Do we? And I said, you know, we, we can't do the, the great big things right now that, that need to be done. We, we will, we're getting there, and this was before the, the budget and the, and the capital right. uh, budget. But I said, we do have funds now because we, we do have the, the 19 budget and we're, you know, at that time we were working on the 20. Um, but I said, if we can start doing little things, if we can start with um, improved, upgraded, if we can start with new or improved or upgraded signage, it's noticeable. If we can put uh, rock down on an approach uh, on the uh, road to the park, that's noticeable. If we could build some fish cleaning stations along that body of water that's new, that's noticeable. 
So we're having those conversations about what can we do that is right at our grasp, um, that isn't a big procurement item mm -hmm. that will improve and upgrade our facilities. So we're having those conversations too. When you met with the governor, uh, and it's interesting you said he was the first governor since Jim Thompson to visit uh, the, State Museum. Uh, the State Museum. Now everyone knows he's from Chicago. There's a couple of things, and I don't know the governor well. I've been in his company, and I've asked him some questions at press conference, but I really don't know him. But occasionally he'll say something that it struck me that, um, that and I think he maybe get, took it in from his campaign that was took him all over the state, that he really does, I think, appreciate more than he did heretofore before he ran for governor. Uh, it, how big Illinois is, how many spaces there are, how much of a state there is outside of Chicago, right. and that Southern Illinois, I think he's sincere that Southern Illinois uh, needs to be paid a bit more attention to. Uh, would I be right on that? And to, if I am, did he ever voice that in so many words to you relative to uh, the approach to this position? Well, I, I would say you, I think your assessment is correct. I, I think you are accurate. Uh, in deducing that from just the, the few times that you've been in his company. Um, and, and so when, when we talked and, and during the interview and I referenced my, my previous role as the state director for USDA Rural Development, uh, having been in all 102 counties, um, when I, I talked about being fascinated by Cairo, um, a, a town that that has on the confluence of the Ohio and the Mississippi where you can right. go on the out the, the, the lookout and you can see the muddy Mississippi and I've done that and yeah. you have it's, 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 it's remarkable how I mean the you two can biggest see, rivers in America merging merge yeah. right there and and I talked about how you you stand along the river and you see the the dilapidated historic warehouses and and the demise that, of well, that the town community. looks like a ghost town it almost. does and and he knew that he he I to your point I, I, he recognized too that this is a big state that has great needs uh, all up and down uh, and and its breadth as well but you don't know that unless you see it it's one thing for somebody to tell you about it but until you see it and and again you said he was there he traveled the, the whole state uh, and so like you I have a sense that he does uh, want to do what we can working together across agencies um, shouldn't the Department of Natural Resources be working with DCEO and tourism yes yes we should we are and and, and we will uh, and shouldn't we be working with uh, the Department of Agriculture uh, as it relates to uh, this week as a matter of fact is pollinator week and so um, director Sullivan and I and, and over at EPA uh, we've planted pollinator plots to make sure that we do our part collectively uh, to make sure that the monarch butterfly doesn't get listed on the endangered species list. And so we have a little contest going too to see whose plot is going to be the most flourishing by uh, state fair time. But, but that's just a, an example of how we are and should work together across agencies throughout the state. I, I think that does address your, your point and your question. We could... Uh talk for a lot longer than we have the time to do so maybe we can do a, you know we'll do some follow-ups and, and keep in touch but it, it strikes me as we've been talking that you know one of the things I didn't start off but I thought about starting off is saying so what what's your new goals what's your vision what's your uh, initiatives and maybe maybe while that might be the normal thing to ask given where we are which is kind of climbing out of a hole you know, I tell years ago, uh, I took over a family printing business four years after my dad had died. The goal was to try to stay alive uh, because we were basically bankrupt. Now, I did turn it around, but it took years to do. And when you're in that position, it's not about grandiose things. It's about putting the pieces back together so you're functional. Is, is that fair to say? Are, are there any new initiatives? Is there any low-hanging fruit of things you want to do right away? Or is it right now, would you say, for the first several years, first year, couple of years, more or less kind of saying, okay, we're going to do triage, we're going to make an assessment of 
what's broken and let's start fixing it and let's get in the train back on the track. Let me answer that by, with, with this beginning. Um, the, the metaphor I would use is, it's, it's not mine, it's an old one, uh, about the frog that fell in the bucket of milk. And it was just, I haven't heard this. Oh, well, it was just sloshing around in the, in the, in the bucket of, of, of milk and, you know, it thought, oh, I'm never going to get out, I'm going to drown in here. And then all of a sudden, that, that milk began to take form because milk becomes butter. That's why you have a churn, or an old, in the older times you had a churn. And so the more the frog churned that butter, the more solid it became and it jumped out. And I think that's where we are. Uh, so the more we can churn, uh, the more solid we'll become. Uh, and then we can jump out, if you will, and hopefully return to the status that the Illinois Department of Natural Resources once had. It, it was the, the, the look to go to agency as, as a model among other departments of natural resources uh, in the Midwest. Uh, and we can do that again. Um, and so to get there, um, I, I recognized that there is, there is a lot over time, o over a long period of time, as you acknowledged earlier, that, that hasn't been done, that needs to be done foundationally, uh, such as uh, strategic planning. We've been in survival mode right. so long that after you're in survival mode for so long, you just think, oh, I made it. Uh, and so we've made it. We survived. Uh, and now I'm, I'm asking each one of our departments from mines and minerals and, and grants and water resources and, and historic preservation, every agency that exists in the Department of Natural Resources to identify strengths and weaknesses, to do a SWOT analysis, uh, and then to develop their own individual strategic plan for their uh, department. And then we will develop a strategic plan for the whole Department of Natural Resources. So that's ongoing right now. And you know, when you came in, and you, you just were here since March, but um, I can well imagine that, and it's not just in this department uh, era, this agency, that, that the uh, people that worked here were pretty demoralized for given the circumstances doing what they could but not really feeling appreciative or hating to see the parks going down as they were um, and now that we got a major capital bill and it's a much larger i was guessing 35 billion before they passed it and it's what 45 billion so uh i'm just curious have you been able to is it too early or have you been able to sense any kind of uh reinvigoration of morale i do the first day i was here i, I started on march 1st and uh, then the first monday w was the fourth and i did a um I, I just asked everybody who wanted they didn't have to it was voluntary if they wanted to come to the big conference room on the lower level i, I just wanted to, to meet people and so i I just introduced myself and I said, my name is Colleen, not Colleen. Uh, you know, I live on a farm, I've got two Newfoundland dogs, I've got a wonderful husband, daughter just got married in September, da 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 da. Just, just a little bit about me so they had some sense of who you are, who, who I am. Right. Um, and I said, I, I, I'll never remember today everyone's name that's here that I'll meet, but I will stay here as long as you would like and, and try to, to get to know you uh, and something about you so that we have a connection. Um, because I said at my core, at my, at my foundation, I believe that personally, professionally, and even politically, that the beginning of, of a, a project or a relationship starts with three C's. Communicate, collaborate, connect. And so I, I start most of my remarks or meetings with communicate, collaborate, connect, and then I end it with the same thing. And so if you would go throughout the, the building or to any of our uh, facilities where, where I've been and they, you say, uh, have you met Colleen Callahan yet or what do you know about her or what do you think of her, I'm pretty confident they'd say, well, I don't know her very well, but she always says, communicate, collaborate, connect. And so uh, on the first Monday of each month now, I give a state of the state 
and I go right back to that big conference room. And again, it's voluntary. Whoever wants to come can. Whoever has time uh, can. And I give an update on what's transpired uh, in that month, wh where I've been, what I've learned, what we're working on. If they have any questions, I see, or if you don't want to ask them publicly, you're welcome to come up to the office, and, and we can do it that way. So th that is the premise. Uh, I would say from just listening that it feels different than it did four years ago or three years ago or two years ago or maybe even six months ago. Um, and it, that's not just because of me. I believe that it feels different because we do have a budget. And we know that with that budget, we have uh, a budget now that we can hire up to 1,250 people. Right now we have 1,136. So, so that means we can bring in new people and we can start replacing so that not everyone feels like they have to do three jobs. You, you can put away the duct tape and start exactly. start fixing things. So <laughs> it feels different. Yeah. Uh, so I think the answer to your question would, would be that. Um, what have you sensed? And I would just sense it's just a different feeling now. Well, Colleen Callahan, we wish you well, and we wish you. your agency well, and it is the, as I say, the fun part of government that we can take our kids hunting and fishing or, right. and take them to parks and learn a lot about the history of the state at our right. parks. Uh, and we welcome you and your job, and we Thank welcome you. looking at the improvements we know will be coming. Thank you. Look forward to giving you updates on that. All right. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Illinois Channel. You may also wish to follow us online, where you are free to make comments or program suggestions. Get our breaking news updates on Twitter, where you can find us at Illinois Channel. You can find our past programming on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Illinois Channel TV. Or you can go to the Illinois Channel website at illinoischannel.org. There you can find not only our current video stories and programs, but also our library of past programs, as well as articles that provide additional information about Illinois issues and individuals. The Illinois Channel, keeping you connected to your state, your issues, your home.